What's going on guys, welcome back to another video and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to drain, flush and replace your coolant on your BMW E60 and E61. Okay then, so let's get right into things. So first of all, just for ease of access, I'm just going to remove this front engine cover. This is two T30 bolts that holds that in place. And then if we look down here at the bottom of the radiator, you see that red cap there? That is the bleed screw for the radiator. Now then, if you take a look underneath, you will see the drain plug itself. Now all you need to do is put a flat headed screwdriver into this red plug and then there is actually a drain below it. Now you can either just let it drain from here and risk it going everywhere all over your pipes and just spraying outwards or you can actually go ahead and connect a hose on. So I just have this hose right here. There you go. Now it's a pretty tight fit, but because this is going to be coming out at some force, I think what I'm going to do is put a zip tie on it. That should hold it in place, and that means that I can then drain the coolant into my bucket just here. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is start turning this bleed screw. And as you can see, it's actually stopped already and that's because there's a vacuum created with the header tank cap being on. So I'm going to take the header tank cap off and then it should start flowing a lot more freely then. There we go. And once that's finished draining, you want to screw the drain plug back in. And then we are going to fill the cooling system again with just water. And that's now filled up to the max. Cap goes back on. And then we start the engine. And the reason that we put the heaters on full is because we want the coolant to flush around the heating system as well. And then once it's reached operating temperature, we can then repeat the process of draining the coolant again. So cap off the expansion tank. And after that lot has finished draining, then what you would do is complete the cycle numerous times until you just have water draining from your radiator. But because I've only just reinstalled this engine back into the car, I know that there is only water in the engine anyway. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to fill the coolant reservoir with a mixture of antifreeze coolant and deionized water. Now this coolant right here, it's Febby Bilstein and it is the correct specification for this engine. I wouldn't recommend skimping on coolant, just get the correct spec and you know it is then doing its job. Obviously different coolants have different anti-corrosion properties so it's best to get the coolant for your engine. And the reason that I'm using deionized water is well, because it says in the bottle, prevents furring and scale formation. Now then, the recommended dilution for this coolant is on the back. So if you want to go up to minus 24 degrees Celsius, you'd use two parts coolant, three parts water. If you want to go up to 36 degrees Celsius, one part coolant, one part water. Minus 52 degrees Celsius, three parts coolant and two parts water. 
To be honest, I don't think it's even going to get to minus 24 where I'll be driving it. So, so I'm actually just going to go with two parts coolant and three parts water. Now, obviously, there is some water still in the system, so I need to bear that in mind. So I think what I'm going to do is stick two liters of coolant and then 2.5 liters of the deionized water and then see where the level is at. Okay then, so that's actually on the max now. I think what I'm gonna do is get the engine up to operating temperature. Obviously the thermostat will then open and the coolant will get to everywhere it needs to be. And this level should drop then. And then obviously I'll need to add first more deionized water and then if need be, some more coolant. Okay then guys, so I have actually just taken the car for a nice long drive let the car get up to temperature then i've just checked the coolant level again in the coolant reservoir and it's actually um, still at the max line so i do not need to add any coolant however for the next few days i am just going to carry around some coolant in the boot i've just got a made up bottle of around a liter of mixed coolant and the deionized water and so yeah this is uh that's pretty much the um coolant flush and replace done now i know i'm going to get a whole bunch of you guys asking you know why aren't you uh why aren't you bleeding the air out of the system now typically on a bmw especially if you have an electric uh, water pump you will have a bleeding of the air procedure from the cooling system because this isn't a electric water pump um, that procedure doesn't uh, is you know doesn't work the same and um, there isn't actually any bleed screws um, you know for the air on this engine either you know this is the n47 engine on the previous m47 and the m57 and the n57 i believe there is bleed screws but for whatever reason on this one i cannot seem to find any now you know with that being said i have you know just simply drained flushed and replaced the coolant like i have done today on all of my previous other cars and i've never had any problems with overheating or you know air in the system or anything so you know obviously if i do get those problems then i can later um you know address that and um see if there is a way to bleed the air out of the system um but yeah with uh, with that being said i'm going to leave this one here i hope you guys have enjoyed it i hope you've learned something um at least and uh, i guess i'll see you guys in that next video so please give this video a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you haven't already done so and i'll see you guys in that next one peace